I greet you. Yes, you in particular, dear viewer. And maybe you've asked yourself before, how are reviewers actually measuring headphones? And well, the answer is pretty straightforward and not as complicated as you might have thought. And in today's review or video, not review, I'll be going over how I'm measuring my headphones or IEMs and how you, yes, you can do it yourself if you would like. And yeah, um, I try to keep this relatively short. So let's directly get to the first aspect. And this is the hardware setup. Of course, you will be needing a computer. And in my case, it's a beautiful self-built system with a random Asus mainboard and pretty decent power supply. And yeah, all those things don't really matter. The only thing matters is you have a computer where you can install software and that are able to run AFA something like Arta or in my case, RAW. And yeah, that is the first major aspect you will have to fulfill in order to measurements. I have heard there are also smartphone apps that can do that, but I haven't dug into that myself. So generally I will, re will be recommending using whatever computer you have, as long as it can install raw on it, you are fine. Second aspect, also really important as you can already see that here, you need a measuring microphone. And yeah, you technically don't really need a microphone like this, but I would really suggest or recommend you going for an yeah, IEC 711 coupler or an, one of those clones like what I have here. You can find these generally on AliExpress or well, your random Asia site for I think like between 70 and 100 something euros. And yeah, they are much better than uh, other yeah, cheaper microphones or something like the uh, ear setup you can buy. Definitely, yeah, worth the money if you are into measuring your headphones, right? So yeah, that is definitely what you will also need for IEMs. And um, just to give you a quick view here. So this is kind of the, yeah, the beginning of the ear canal. You would plug your IEMs into this one. And beneath that here would directly be the microphone. And the base I have here is just for yeah better placement on the table, but you don't even need this big block of metal here. You could also go for the standard coupler, which literally just has an yeah outlet at the bottom where you plug in the cable. For over yes, however, what you will be needing is something like this. Whoop, wrong direction. So this is a soft outer peanut. As you can see here, it's wiggly waggly and it's made from random silicone. It does look pretty awful, I got to admit but you should get something like that if you want to measure over your headphones, which I of course want to do, so I definitely need that. And yeah, uh, and third of all, what you will be needing, and what I cannot show you because this camera is fixed on the tripod here, um, you will also be needing something to plug it into your computer, right? I will not recommend you to use onboard audio because that just measures all over the place. It's really not recommended. Um, the, the sellers on AliExpress will mostly recommend you to get their measuring box, but I honestly don't trust these boxes to be neutral in terms of how they yeah, measure. So what I went for is the cheaper Apple USB-C dongle because that does measure pretty well. It's of course not the best thing in the world, but I think for just generally measuring yeah, roughly IEMs to just see how they're doing, this is mostly acceptable. Don't spectre here, interrupting myself. I have a quick addition to make. Of course, you also need a DAC and AMP setup. And yeah, again here, the Apple USB-C dongle will be fine for most IEMs. Of course, assuming they are pretty easy or pretty normal to drive. But for over ears, that can already be a bit tricky. So yeah, of course, best case would be you have a decent DAC amp setup that also measures pretty much that neutral. And I myself here, I'm using um, SMSL SU8 as DAC and um, SMSL SP200 as amp. So that is pretty much, yeah, uh, as neutral as it gets for a reasonable price. And yeah, then now uh, get back to the upper part. So yeah, um, I'll be linking all of what I talk about here in the uh, description. And uh, keep in mind, I'm not being paid or anything, right? This is just a uh, link, whatever I can find. And it's also, yeah, uh, not a uh, uh, ref link or anything. So uh, yeah, uh, feel free to uh, look for other stuff. I just give you some examples in the description. So yeah, uh, of course you need to plug it in, right? And when you have the hardware ready and you are technically good to go and as next thing, you would of course need some software. 
And here I'll be throwing on uh, yeah, some software uh, setup in between. And yeah, here you will of course need some random software. Um, most Chinese sellers will give you an, let's say, semi-legal copy of Arta. But um, yeah, I will be using an, I want to say freely available software, which is called R Raw Rear. Not sure how to pronounce that in English correctly. In German, you would just say R E. Uh, w or like let's say say R E W and uh, yeah this uh, thing can do quite a lot of different tasks and we will only want to use the measure function later on and yes you need to set up this software and the most important step here is that you go to preferences you go to calibration files and then here you find uh, yeah a list of audio devices plugged in your computer. And you do need to find the microphone or like the sound card you want to use as input. For me, this would be here the headphone 3.5 millimeter jack adapter, which is the iPhone dongle. And then you just uh, go to browse and then you find your calibration file. So uh, generally speaking, a calibration file, and I go live through you with that here, is, uh, yep, um, this one. Uh, just a yeah, pretty basic function file or pretty basic file as you can see here, which has all the frequencies from starting, yeah, this one is 10 hertz, all the way up to, let's see how we can go, yeah, to 20 kilohertz. And it will just uh, uh, tell the program how this deviates from a given neutral point. Usually this given neutral point is at one kilohertz, uh, uh, the 1000 hertz, and yeah, this is when the zero point and everything else is relative to that. So you, in theory, then in the end get a like flat line, or like a flat line in terms of software. The hardware will still be like wiggly squiggly line, but uh, the software, what it will see or how it will compensate, it will be in flat line in terms of the microphone. And that is why it's also important you get a sound card that measures pretty neutral, so you have no problem with like boosted bass, boosted treble, or anything else. And yeah, the, uh, uh, the USB-C dongle from Apple does mostly that. So it will be fine for the case of just yeah having a rough idea. And uh, if you want to go like fancier, you of course need a special sound card. And those get pretty expensive pretty quickly, so I did not go, go that route. So yeah, um, having set up your sound card here, uh, you will of course then have uh, quite a few other options, including a house curve where you can just yeah choose to get your own reference curve in. I have no reference curve and I'll be making video about why I don't think this is a uh, useful tool, at least to myself personally, to have a like, reference point. But yeah, generally you will have to set up a few other points here and um, uh, yeah, I, uh, if you are more interested in the details, what I've set up here, I link an, the written article here again in the description, which yeah goes over all of those details just quickly, so you know what I've changed and what I haven't changed. So yes, uh, then I would say we can already talk about how you would actually go out of your way and measure a headphone, right? And yeah, that is pretty easy. And generally, let me just minimize everything. You will click on measure and we ignore that for a moment. Now you have the yeah, measuring window here. And yeah, uh, here you of course again can put on the name. You can, uh, you should put on this to DBFS here. And uh, standard wise, this is set to uh, minus 12. And yeah, here of course you can set up the range you want to measure in case you think you only want to measure for, I don't know, like let's say 100 hertz to 500 hertz. You could do that here. I, of course, want to have all of the frequency from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, because that is yeah, the approximately the range human hearing is able to yeah, hear. Uh, and then, uh, again, you would have to check that your input is actually correct here. You can double check by even calibration file loaded. And then I would recommend you to yeah, first check the level, so you see if that thing, the microphone here, is actually seeing anything. And after that, you would click on start. And then it would take, as listed here, about 5.5 seconds for one measurement. So what you'll be getting then is a frequency curve, which I unfortunately cannot demonstrate now because yeah, uh, I do not uh, know how to set this software up. So it does not take the primary input option. And yeah, of course, I'm uh, talking to my computer now through an other microphone, maybe measuring microphone. So yeah, just uh, I will throw on a random measurement of whatever I am, probably the PMVPP here, just because 
yeah, I currently have that set up. And yeah, that is basically how easy you can measure your headphone. However, um, there are a few points you should keep in mind when you do measure your own headphone and also points that I keep in mind when I measure my headphone. The first one is you should try to be really consistent in how you measure. This basically means if you measure your IEM, for example here the PP, always try to use the same tip so you have a consistent thing over all of your measurements. And for me, this is exactly this tip here. This has a medium wide bore. As you can see, it's like also a small in size, but not too small. And I try to put it in. Let me just get the loop, this again up. I try to put it in, just show you from the side so you can see that better, all of the way until it seals completely. So uh, yeah, um, I hope one can see that on video here. Uh, I try to push it in as far as it goes so the actual tip seals with the top of the uh, measurement stem here. And I try to get that right, or like um, pretty similar with all of my items I have. Yeah, then, uh, so this is one thing you should always keep uh, yeah, uh, identical in all of your measurements so they are at least comparable. The second one, of course, is um, you have to try to get your measurement to a level that is comparable over all of your measurements. And that's also what I try to do. Um, Bad Guardio has set it to 77 decibels and I try to go in a similar direction. I try to yeah, normalize uh, at 1K. This means I try to have uh, 77 decibels at 1K over all of my measurements. And yeah, it will be mm, probably more like plus one or two decibels uh, because it's not as easy to get this correct over multiple measurements, uh, especially if you have IEMs and you use a yeah, powerful device like the SP200 here. But this is generally what I try to do. I try to be consistent over all of my measurements and try to yeah do the same stuff and use the same settings I have used before. So these are actually comparable. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, for all the headphones, you would have to use this uh, soft peanut here. And uh, let me just get the second part of my over-ear measurement installation in the picture. So the second part of my over-ear measurement device is a cardboard box that I have modified so you can see it. I would put that over the edge of my table. So like that. Just say the table is my hand here. That would be mounted here. Then I would flop the microphone on top and then I would yeah, put an over ear headphone from the now left side from here over the cardboard box. So it will just fit on an, I want to say like my head dummy in quotes, head dummy, right? So it just seal over the soft peanut here, which I, when would of course be screwed on here. Um, this does work relatively well because I have um, measured the overall yeah, width of this uh, box combined with my table and the height of the microphone to match approximately what my head is in width. And I cannot tell you at the moment how much that is, but I did the measurement because I wanted it to yeah, uh, um, also be as wide as my head would be. So if I do a measurement there, it also yeah, gets a similar kind of seal. But again, for all the headphones, I will make sure it does seal correctly. So if it doesn't do with my construction here, I will just go out of my way and uh, yeah, try to uh, um, fix the uh, headphone so I get a seal all around. And that is also something you have to watch out when you do measurements yourself, if you want to do that. Try to be consistent. Always go in the same direction where you try to yeah, mount your headphone uh, similarly, try to always make sure it seats correctly. And then you're pretty much yeah, good to do your own measurements for whatever IEMs or headphones you want to do. And this is, I think, pretty much everything that is important. And yeah, um, I there are still a few things. <laughs> I'm not sure why they're happening, how they're happening. So uh, if I go for uh, the raw software here again, and there are rep uh, repetitions here, and I set these to a higher value than one, it will actually decrease the treble response. I have no clue why when you average multiple measurements or multiple repetitions, why the treble response gets reduced, but I can reproduce this behavior like with any headphone or any IEM and it always appears to be lowering the more repetitions I go for. So that's pretty weird and I haven't been figuring out, I haven't been able to figure out why or how this is happening. But this is why I usually uh, go for one repetition here and then apply some smoothing after that. 
And yeah, uh, also for sanity check, I usually do yeah left and right channel, and then yeah see if there's a difference. Uh, so I can have an yeah good confidence that my measurements are actually accurate enough for the general purpose of reviews. So yes, um, I hope you liked this short uh, introduction in how I or how you, yes, you, dear viewer, can do measurements of headphones. And yeah, there are probably more nuances here, but I'm also pretty new as a reviewer, right? And I have only been in contact with two other reviewers who do measurements so far. And yeah, I try to do my best to keep them as consistent as possible. And yeah, uh, if you have any uh, uh, other experience and you can give me more advice or more tips, I would be really welcoming those and I'm really thankful for every critique I'll be getting because critique helps me in making better content. It helps me making better measurements. It just helps me overall being a better reviewer. So yeah, as I said, if you have anything, uh, feel free to leave a comment, be critical and help me to be a better reviewer. And with this, I'd say, don't spectre out.